Today we're going to take a look at feature flagging in iOS. Feature flagging is simply a means of hiding and showing specific features in an application at runtime, but with this approach, we can have shorter software integration cycles, easily implement A-B tests, and most importantly, limit a user's access to features in real time. Let's get started. Most of the time, when we're developing code, we'll have our master branch, which we'll try and keep deployable at all times, and then whenever we're tasked with a new feature, we'll branch off of master and continue all of our work on a specific feature branch. And over time, this feature branch can get really large, and it becomes difficult to maintain. You'll have more merge conflicts, increased size of pull requests, limited ability to perform integration testing, different dependency versions, and so on. So with feature flags though, we could allow this unfinished work to be merged back into the main master branch, but prevent any user from seeing it. For example, we could use compiler directives to ensure that this new feature's code isn't even included in the compiled executable. Or we can simply implement a feature flag as a boolean to selectively enable some feature. There are a few different ways of implementing feature flags in our applications, most commonly either as a struct or as an enum. And a feature flag doesn't have to be limited to hiding and showing new features as a whole. We can use it to customize behavior of existing ones. So for example, in this feature flag, we're tweaking the amount of checkout items that a user is allowed. And if you intend to test variations on an existing feature, you'll probably find that the struct implementation is probably the easiest to use. Generally, I'll only use the enum approach when I only want to restrict access to features entirely. Every production application I've worked on has some variation of a developer-only view that allows you to simulate various states in your app. Sometimes it's simple things like allowing you to easily switch between backend environments or resetting your user defaults slash your image cache, for example, or more often it's around custom settings and behavior for your logged in user. But feature flags lend themselves really well to enabling these types of developer menus. If you surface your feature flag in these menus, it allows you and other internal testers to easily simulate and test all the potential user flows in your application. Now, feature flags don't have to be statically defined. We can use our backend to get a custom set of feature flags for every user. So imagine that this is your response from your application's API slash feature flag endpoint. In this case, this particular user has access to the expedited booking feature uh, and surge pricing, but they don't have access to the referral program. Similarly, we can see that they are not part of the new onboarding flow uh, A-B test, but they are part of the test group for the new checkout flow. Now, we could have the counterpart on the iOS side look something like this. And a more robust implementation would include default values for these feature flags, just to handle a case where the API call fails or the user is offline. You may also want to save these feature flags to disk, so that way when the user launches the app next time, their experience is consistent. So one of the advantages of this approach of having backend driven feature flags is that we can change these values on the backend at any time. And if our iOS app queries these flags periodically, we could unlock new flows for our users and enter them into new A-B tests, all without releasing a new version. So now let's go ahead and see how we can leverage remote feature flags to enable A-B testing and prevent crashes in our app. So if the clients fetch the current set of feature flags from the backend, we'd be able to easily specify whether the current user is part of the control or the experiment group and alter the user flow and analytics accordingly. Similarly, if our backend system was capable, we could use the same infrastructure to slowly roll out a new feature to a select group of users. We could tweak the feature flag to only be true for 1% of users at first, then five, then 10, and so on. And with this approach, we could continuously look at our crash rate and our analytics and decide if we want to release this feature to more people. Otherwise, our only option would be to release this new feature to everyone and hope that they like it and it's stable. So when you are planning on releasing a new feature, I found it to be prudent to wrap it in a feature flag just as a precaution. This way, if you realize that the app is crashing in production, you can just toggle the feature flag off 
and return your users to the previous flow, which is likely more tested, all without releasing a new app version. And then in a few weeks time, once you're sure that the feature is stable, you can simply remove the feature flag from your code base and issue a new release. And while the use of feature flags does marginally increase the amount of maintenance work required, in my opinion, having the peace of mind of knowing that I can mitigate issues in production is well worth the extra effort. Now, feature flags are one of the few commonalities I've seen across all the iOS teams I've worked on. And yes, while they take a little bit of time to set up, I found that in every project, they've increased my confidence in releasing new features and greatly enhanced my testing abilities via that developer menu. And as an added benefit, whenever I'm developing a new feature and I want to compare the new behavior against the original implementation, it's so much faster to go into the feature flag struct, flip that value, and then run the app again. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to change branches, wait for Xcode to finish indexing, potentially resolve any differences in dependency versions, and wait for the whole module to be recompiled before I could run the app again. So to wrap everything up, with feature flags, our master branch of our application is always deployable, and we can easily minimize merge conflicts with our feature branches. Uh, we can slowly release a new feature instead of all at once. We can test our application a lot more thoroughly through our developer menu. We can further customize our user experience. We can easily implement A-B tests, and we can catch and mitigate issues in production without creating a new release. So I hope this video was useful. If you found it interesting, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thanks.